हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू द चैप्टर ऑन एडवांस स्टेट मॉडलिंग वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस्ड अ फ्यू थिंग्स इन अ प्रीवियस क्लास सो जस्ट हैव अ क्विक रिकैप ऑफ व्हाट वी हैव डन वी वेंट थ्रू नेस्टेड स्टेट डायग्राम्स राइट सो वी हैव सीन नेचर ऑफ इंक्लूडिंग ऑल द स्टेट्स इंडिपेंडेंटली इट कुड वी वुड हैव टू जनरेट टू रेस टू एन स्टेट्स राइट सो इन स्टेट सो यू कुछ फ्लैट स्टेट डायग्राम्स कुड रिप्रेजेंट समथिंग लाइक दिस सो वॉट वी डिड the next thing we had was expanding states right so you need to organize your model by a high level diagram so when we took this example we have seen that dispense is the local name dispense item is the name of the sub diagram that you are trying to call okay which is also known as sub machine so this is a vending machine example you know that states are represented with rounded boxes arrows are the transitions these are the events and what effects they would cause Right, so direction indicates in what direction the transact transition is taking place. Right, so we have seen through this expanding state. Right, so you see this again. So dispense item you are calling. So this is another state diagram. Right, so this is the sub machine of vending machine. Right, so you have given reference to this. And U M L notation for invoking a sub machine is to list a local state name followed by a colon and a sub machine name. So generally you put the state names. But then, if you want to call a sub machine, then you have to give a local state name followed by a sub machine name. In case of nested states, you have seen that when you have commonality of behavior, okay, you can put them inside another state. So you can see the phone line active example. Here earlier, when we took it independently, this active state was not there. But when you want to deal with nested states, you have put up all these states in something known as active because when you talk of the phone line. It can either be idle or it can be in active state. So when you are referring to as active, it could be in dialing mode, right? You have the dial tone, you have the connecting, ringing, connected, or finally disconnected, right? So all these states you are talking about as active, and then output of any of this goes to active, and then you have the idle state, right? So it receives the outgoing transitions of its enclosing state. So this is what we dealt with in nested states. So the example of the same. and then we have here regarding the car transmission so what is an nested state here forward because in forward you again have first second third right so and here you have neutral this is reverse so car could be in three possible states neutral reverse or forward so what we mean by forward is first second or third again depending on fourth fifth gear that depends on the situation so this is nested state so i hope the difference between nested and expanding states is clear here and then with entry and exit activities right then we had seen signal generalization where you are trying to show the part of the hierarchy you are organizing signals into a generalization hierarchy with inheritance of signal attributes for this also we worked through this example right where we had taken a user input which could be with the help of a mouse button or a keyboard character when you say a mouse button a mouse has two buttons so one is down and one is up when you talk of keyboard characters they could be control or graphic so when you talk of graphic it could be again space alpha numeric or punctuation so this is how you see the generalization hierarchy has been placed now let us go ahead with concurrency right state model implicitly supports concurrency among objects right con meaning of concurrency concurrency comes from the word concurrent where two or more things are trying to happen simultaneously right so how do you handle such things in general autonomous objects are autonomous entities that can act and change state independent of one another however objects need not be completely independent and may be subject to shared constraints that cause some correspondence among their state changes right so let us understand all these things with the help of an example first we deal with aggregation concurrency a state diagram for an assembly is a collection of state diagrams one for each part we have seen in case of advanced class modeling the meaning of aggregation where you know that aggregate is a collection of all the parts right so wherein we had taken the lawn mower example you had the engine blades the wheels right all make up the lawn mower right so that is where we talk of aggregation and we had seen that when it comes to aggregation and composition you are basically dealing with the whole part relationship right so you have a part of involved in that particular thing so here when you are having a state diagram right three four state diagrams aggregating to one particular state diagram that is where you are talking of aggregation concurrency so what is it it's an assembly it's a collection of state diagrams one for each part the aggregate state corresponds to the combined states of all the parts aggregation is the 
and relationship. The aggregate state in is one state from the first diagram and a state from the second diagram and a state from the other diagram. So, when you are referring to states from different diagrams, you are aggregating them into one state diagram. In more interesting cases, the path states interact. So, if you look at this example, what are you trying to do? First one is you are referring to the car example. This is your main diagram, right? Now, here you have ignition, transmission, accelerator and brake, right? But for each of these parts, you have one state diagram. For ignition, you have a diagram. For transmission, you have a state diagram. For accelerator, you have one. And for brake, you have one. So, all these, right? So, one state diagram for here, that is for one part, one diagram, another part, another diagram. So, all these are aggregating to something known as the car, right? So, this is known as aggregation concurrency, right? So, you can see for ignition, it is transmission and neutral, release key. So, on, on, off, ignition. Transmission just now we had seen neutral reverse and forward that is first, second or third. Accelerator whether you are pressing it or you are not pressing it. So, it is depressed accelerator that is your leg is on the accelerator or you have released the accelerator. When it comes to brake you have either applied the brakes or you have released the brakes. So, all four are forming the aggregate for the car. So, this is your aggregation concurrency. Remember the term aggregation it comes from the term aggregate. When you think of aggregate, always think of commonly used is for your marks, you use aggregate, right? Aggregate of all the things, right? You try to sum up. But then you are nothing like division, right? You are not dividing it by anything to get your aggregate. It's just you are combining all the parts into a whole. Synchronization of concurrent activities, right? So, your concurrent activities, as I just now had mentioned, two or three things happening at the same time. So, how do you synchronize those things, right? Like for example, you go to the ATM. Right? When you have entered the certain amount you want to withdraw, it ejects your amount along with the card. Right? So, which one are you going to take first or which one has to supposed to happen first? Right? Both are happening simultaneously. It is up to you what you pick up first. Right? So, uh, how do you show that in an UML diagram? Right? If I have to show that the order does not matter but then things are happening simultaneously, what is the notation that we are going to use? So, you can see your cash dispenser. You have the setting up ready, it is emitting, so cash and card both are being ejected and in the next state it is ready to reset. So, you see this something known as split up of lines, right. So, the control that is there, it can split into concurrent activities that subsequently merge. So, if you are having 2-3 activities ha happening simultaneously, you have put them when you have said emitting and then you are showing what all the control has been split into, right. No matter what order you take in, ultimately after you have done both, that is only when both are completed, it goes to the ready to reset. That is, you have to take your cash, you have to even take your card. And only after both the, these states are completed, it goes to ready to reset. So, do we have already seen continuously happening activity. So, it is keep blinking unless you take the cash and it keeps blinking that light unless you have taken your card, right. So, that is where you make use of a do activity, continuous activity that has to happen until it is fulfilled. So, this is something known as synchronization of control. Sample state model. So, you see all this sums up into your sample state model. You are talking of a set clock, right. So, where you are setting the minutes, you are setting the hours, right. You are setting the day and then all this is happening here, right. This is a sample for a set clock and set day, right. So, how do you show it? And I have already told you this indicates the start, where it, it is starting. When it comes to relation between class and state model, right? So, throughout we have seen when we discuss the state model and advanced state modeling concept, it specifies allowable sequences of changes to objects from the class model. It describes all or part of the behavior of the objects of a given class. So, I had mentioned in the previous classes where we had discussed the three model that class diagram happens to be the base, it is the static structure. Unless you know that, you do not know what is changing, right. So, state model is basically focusing on what are the state changes happening in that particular object. So, if the object does not exist, there is no point of talking about the life history of the object, that is how the object is changing or trying to manipulate certain things. That is the reason when you talk about the relationship, first we need to have the class diagram. Based on which you are developing your state diagram, you are talking about how the changes are happening in the object over a period of time. Right? So, when it comes to relationship between the both the models, that is what you need to remember. Right? So, our base happens to be the class model and then we have the state model. Right? So, till here we have discussed all the basics of 
class modeling advanced class modeling state modeling and advanced state modeling right so your advanced state modeling contains all these things and then for the next thing we would be starting with the third leg of uh, the interaction modeling right so there you would start with the interaction model right so where we would have discussion on use cases activity diagrams and sequence diagrams right so that's all for this class thank you have a nice day